Shumë mark, jam e, nga zona e pukës, jam një të dy vjesh. Tu me këtë punë ka që merëm që 15 vjet, që kam rëndu rës. Puna e në sikur, është të dobë kja sikur është një aftë asë gjam për shpëndimit familjarë. Asë pak në malë. Në malë e dhe tjështë e për mundë sikur tjështë në një shkollë, në një universitet, të së të dju për në gjam, jetë së të djashë këtë në këtë plenë, në këtë infekcija, në këtë gjam. Mark is a rag picker. In Albania, one of the poorest countries in Europe, there are thousands like him surviving by salvaging refuse. Since the fall of communism in 1991, Albania has gradually sunk under a pile of garbage. Huge dumps are invading a country barely any larger than Britain. Despite Albania's struggles to manage its own waste, it has to rely on managing that of its European neighbours for economic development. In recent years, nearly 700,000 tonnes of household and industrial waste have been imported for destruction or recycling. Is Albania in danger of becoming the dustbin of Europe? It's 3 a.m. in the open dump of Durez. Mark is one of the first to arrive. Mark, like most pickers, is from Albania's Catholic minority, the Geg. Left out of the communist regime, these former peasants from the mountains of the north are now fleeing the depression of those agricultural regions. Every night, scavengers fight for waste from the country's second city. Mark specializes in cardboard, and the cleaner the cardboard, the better the price. Others specialize in plastic. On the outskirts of Jerez, the Mijtula neighborhood is just waking up. A dozen Roma families live in these makeshift shelters. For a long time, the Roma were the only recyclers in Albania. Now, Renato and his father can no longer work in the city dump. <laughs> Northern Albania has become a land of landfill. Now, Renato collects waste out of the city garbage. In his neighborhood, everyone lives on informal recycling. In a country where 14% of the population lives on less than one euro per day, 
the Roma are the most affected by poverty. They number between 100 and 150,000, the largest Albanian minority. <laughs> 17-year-old Renato never went to school. He has worked in waste since he was eight, the age of the youngsters he takes with him today. More than half of Albanian Roma are illiterate. Three times a day, Renato tours the containers of Dores. Yeah. This morning, the group will only find some scraps of plastic. Roma are six times more likely to be unemployed than other Albanians. After two hours of work, Renata returns to the Mitchtula neighborhood. He is able to offload today's haul with a trader outside the Roma settlement. Renato normally sells his harvest for a few leks per day. <laughs> 35 euro cents for two pounds of plastic. This morning, Renato earns barely enough to buy bread. Five kilometers away, among the trash piles of Juras, garbage trucks work from early in the morning. From 3 a.m. until midday, Mark continues his collection. Competition among scavengers has led to a heavier workload. <laughs> Working in landfills is illegal in Albania, but with no alternative for the poor, the government allows them in. Mark sells his card for 20 euros per ton. With his old truck bought on credit, it's difficult to make ends meet. He earns 100 euros per month. This is half the average wage in Albania. All his goods are sold to the largest recycler of paper in the region. Badil Balthazar, the director of Edipak, works with hundreds of small collectors in Duras. It's not enough. He needs more organized collection to run his business.
The entrepreneur is a pioneer in recycling. In 2004, he founded his cardboard factory with the help of European and American funds and fueled it in part with the paper waste of neighboring countries. But in 2013, a new government banned all imports. Mardhënje me vëndet fëqinë, me Kosovën, me Macedoninë, me Malnezi, blinim pak letër për e tyre, po me vendimin e qeverisë për ndalimin e importit, unë dalu dhe kjo mundësi dhe kështu që ne jemi dënuar të punojme me 25% të kapacitetit tonë. A significant revenue loss for the contractor. Until last year, Albanian recyclers legally imported dustbins from European countries. In the past, Household and industrial waste was officially allowed to enter Albania. Plastic, cardboard, scrap metal, batteries. The recycling industry boomed, with businesses flourishing along the country's borders. But some began to worry. Recycling recently was mainly for recycling imported waste. Might have been totally uncontrolled, and the information up to, let's say, five years ago was, was very scattered. So you wouldn't really have how much waste or raw material for recycling would come in. Everything was coming in from all countries, but mainly from European countries. They were saying there were around 570 different type of substances or materials coming in Albania without any list or check or... So it was a real open boundaries. The introduction of hazardous substances into the country sounded an alarm. Hospital waste from the Greek neighbors, electric batteries from Italy. In 2004, France sent nearly 600 tons of toxic metal residues. In all, Dozens of incidents of toxic waste imports are documented by the UN. Fear gripped the country. Albania does not have the necessary infrastructure for treating toxic waste. The end of imports became the object of parliamentary elections in June 2013. Edi Rama, leader of the Albanian Socialist Party, promised to end it. Once elected, it was the first order of his government. The Gjoja më e mirë që ne mund të bënim për Shqiprin e rënuar që të rashgojmë është ndalimi i importit të gjdo lojim bedurina. Plerat në Shqipri nuk do të hynë asë njëherë dhe i ditën kër Shqipria do tjetë njëndje të seleksionoj, të ndaj, të mbledh, të përpunoj plerat që prodhon vetë. Since then, Badil Balthazar and small recyclers have struggled to save their businesses, even by working around the law. On the day of our interview, Edi Pak received a paper delivery from Austria. According to him, what comes from abroad is not waste, but raw material. We import a letter in Bart that we don't produce this. The pieces of the other produce this. Po, jo, jo, këto janë gjithë nga Shqipëria, s'ka asë një gjë këtu nga jashtë. That day, it was impossible to distinguish Austrian paper from Albanian waste. Edi Pak continues to import raw materials from Italy, Austria and Turkey. Waste or raw material, the legal status of these imports is uncertain. Does a lack of control allow recyclers to continue to run their factories with foreign waste? At the headquarters of the Albanian government, the Prime Minister Edi Rama ensures all imports are blocked. The two some no one had decided to arrest toute importation parce que le pays pouvait pas garantir un contrôle approprié et pouvait pas être protégé. Vis-à-vis -vis des déchets euh, toxiques qui ont pu traverser la frontière euh, dans une sorte de 
une connivence entre la criminalité et la politique. Et quels moyens vous avez mis en œuvre depuis septembre On a arrêté ça. Il n'y a plus de gens qui importent. Voilà. Le scrap metal, vous l'avez aussi euh, interdit normalement On a interdit tout. Mais vous avez encore du mal, du coup, avec les douanes, ça prend du Non, du on n'a pas de mal. Dans ce, dans ce champ-là, on n'a pas de mal du tout. Two hundred kilometers from the Italian coast is the port of Durez, the largest in Albania. One million tons of cargo go through here each year, a showcase for the opening of the country's borders. Arben Gemelli is deputy director of the port authorities. There, there is a terminal office and custom office. In the terminal? Yeah. Depend from the shift or depend from the, how they decided to be in terminal. Could be three, five person per shift. Two kiosks act as customs in the largest container terminal in the country. But access to the customs floor is strictly prohibited. It's impossible to know how many containers are checked each day. Detection equipment, such as scanners, seems non-existent. They have the scanner. They have the scanner. There is no scanner in the terminal and very few checks of the goods. How do they make sure that imported materials contain no waste or hazardous substances? Is anybody in control in the port of Durres? The terminal was partially privatized, sold off to Karam, a Turkish company. One of the biggest investors in Albania, as well as running the port, the company is also a steel giant. Every day, the company receives several metal containers. The shipments head to Elbasan, 80 kilometers away. In the center of the country, Elbasan is a city frozen in time. In the late 1960s, the communist leader Enver Hoxha chose it to be the home of a giant metal works. There are no natural resources to justify its installation in this remote valley, but the paranoid dictator chose the location for security reasons. Abandoned after the fall of communism, the site was privatized in 1999, and the facilities were transferred to the Turkish giant, Karam. Today, it's the largest employer in the city, with more than 600 workers. Installed on 220,000 square meters, the plant recycles and treats metal and associated waste to produce girders for the construction industry. 70% of the steel used in Albania is made in Elbasan. The director of production, Banyamin Dira Kanli, opened the doors to the recycling plant. Our activities start from scrap. We are collecting scrap, sorting scrap, treating scrap, eliminate dust, dirt, glass, and some parts inside the scrap, and then send to st steel plant. Every day, nearly 1,500 tons of scrap metal arrives at the factory. Coming especially in, in Albania, domestic market is Kosovo, Macedonia, Serbia, uh, Slovenia, sometimes Italy, sometimes uh, anywhere, Ukraine maybe, in, in Russia, sometimes. 
The Prime Minister claims that imports of scrap metal into the country are banned. But Bunyamin Dirakanli does not seem aware of this law. I don't know exactly this uh, new law. We are, we, we are importing normally, like, like 2013. I don't know the details of the law. No. In fact, scrap imports have instead been reclassified from waste to raw material. It's one way to allow Karam to continue producing Albanian steel. Freedom to bring dangerous waste into the plant. Without controls, foreign weapons and munitions also enter Albania and are recycled in the same way as traditional scrap. The subject is taboo, but on hidden camera, workmen reveal the risks they incur. <laughs> The worker who died was 23 years old. Accidents like this occur frequently in the factory. Four months earlier, Another worker died when handling a grenade. The dismantling and recycling of ammunition and arms, which is extremely dangerous, must be subject to special treatment according to international law. The custom control again comes into the picture. It's not, an, it's, it's not properly enforcing the law. The quality check uh, of the products which are important, it's, it's, uh, it's missing. People also perceive it like the scrap and with no harm. So people perceive the, the import of the scrap like safe enough because it's, it's just metal, it will be melted and reformed into the factory. The lack of controls at the border and the factory is a concern for locals. And since arriving in the region, Karam has increased its productivity tenfold. The plant emits 40,000 tons of dust over the city each year. In Elbasan, atmospheric pollution is three times higher than the European average. At the regional hospital, Dr. Edmund Laho is one of few to publicly voice worries about the increase of disease in patients. <laughs> It turns out the economic heart of the region is poison for the 100,000 inhabitants of Elbasan. According to Dr. Laho's statistics, Cancer of the respiratory and digestive systems is almost twice as high as the national average. Toxic fumes from the Karam chimneys are the main cause. This Sunday, Dr. Laho is visiting the people most affected by this pollution. Bradeshesh, a Roma community, is just meters from the refinery. Mrs. Shkiri was born and grew up in the neighborhood. Like many local men, Musa works in the refinery and has done for 30 years. In 2008, 
the Karam plant was forced to install filters to contain the toxic dust. But for the doctor and many people in the town, the filters do not work. Musa sacrificed his health to the metalworks. Inhalation of toxic heavy metal dust has damaged his lungs. He had to leave the factory after seven years. Today, Musa and his family survives on his disability pension of 140 euros per month. In a final twist of fate, the Albanian government has approved the creation of a landfill site just outside the Bradeshesh district. The site will be filled with toxic residues from the metalworks. Back in Duras, at nightfall, the whole Roma community gathers round the fire. Renato, the young recycler, sets the beat. Tonight, Renato is singing to his wife. He's been married to Alona for four months, and they're expecting a child. The Albanian population is among Europe's youngest. Most, like Renato and his wife, dream of leaving the country. The young Albanian democracy is again ready to knock on the gates of the European Union. But so far, despite the country's attempted reforms, the member states remain unconvinced by the application.